here we go. All right, we have 60 people with us um, tonight. Um, and just welcome everybody to this Yale admissions information session on the Eli Whitney Students Program, uh, a unique program that provides traditional in-person undergraduate education for um, adult students. Um, you're eligible to apply to the Eli Whitney Students Program if you will have been out of high school for at least five years by your intended term of enrollment at Yale, and if you do not already have a bachelor's degree. Uh, so let me introduce myself. I am uh, Patricia Way. I'm Director of Undergraduate Admission, uh, Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions. I'm Director of Admissions for the Eli Whitney Students Program and Director of Veterans Outreach. I know that's a lot of titles, um, but it essentially means that I wear many hats within the admissions office. Um, please uh, note that we are recording this session so that it is available for people who cannot join us uh, this evening or if you wanted to kind of revisit the session. I I know there's some veterans um, joining us tonight who were not able to make it to our Monday uh, information session that was designed for veterans. Um, I will be posting a recording of that session on our admissions website um, in the next uh, uh, couple weeks. Um, now, when I give these types of presentations, um, I often feel like a bit of an imposter, um, though I have worked at Yale for nearly three decades um, and know Yale quite well. I did not attend Yale. So I am thrilled that joining me today are Rudy Cordero and Hilary Warolin. Uh, both are current Yale students in the Eli Whitney Students Program. Um, so Hilary and Rudy, they're, they're the stars of this evening's program. Um, so would each of you like to introduce yourself uh, briefly, Hilary? Hillary, you're on the top of my uh, uh, photos here or um, pictures. So do you want to just tell people your, your hometown, where you attended college briefly, maybe your, your, your work background, your, your academic major? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Hillary Warling. I am a second year Eli Whitney student. Um, I'm from Stillwater, Minnesota. And before coming to Yale, I attended a community college in White Bear Lake called Century College. Um, and I am currently, I don't think I said this already, but I'm an English major. Um, yeah. Um, so, it, oh, in my work background, I was a personal care assistant for a long time, but I've kind of worked in a couple different um, service and ministry areas. So, yeah, I'm excited Thank to be you. here. With you all. <laughs> Thank you, Hillary. Your turn, Rudy. Hi, thanks, Hillary. Uh, thanks, Patricia. Uh, my name is Rudy. I'm from the class of uh, 2023. Um, I'm currently majoring in mathematics and computer science. Uh, before matriculating to Yale, um, I was in Chicago at the City Colleges of Chicago. So I was a part of the Harold Washington College program, but I took classes around the entire system. Um, and I took almost a nine or 10 year break before um, actually going back to community college. Um, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And Rudy, before I dive into the presentation, can you sort of go back to when you were in high school? Now, if someone told you that your cousin was going to attend Yale, what was your impression back then of Yale? Um, and now that you're a Yale student, has that perception changed? A any surprises? Sure. Um, if someone had informed me that I would be at Yale 10 years from now, I, I wouldn't have believed it. I, I was, you know, we were, uh, my parents were immigrated from Mexico and I was a first generation immigrant. Um, I attended public school in high school and elementary school. And um, what my impression of Yale students were that they were academically the best and the most competitive. And to this day, I, I do believe that, um, that they do um, overall tend to be fairly um, well-rounded overall, um, but I wouldn't have believed that I, I would be here. And I, I'm so excited and I'm, I'm so um, happy that Yale has provided an opportunity for me to thrive and, and take courses here that um, enable me to stretch my skill set. Um, and it's been an exciting ride uh, just overall. Um, I mean, again, like first generation immigrant, I mean, I'm, just, I'm just so happy to be here. And we're happy to have both you 
and Hillary here. Um, so tonight, um, Hillary, um, Rudy, and I um, are here to introduce you to Yale. I'll give you some information about Yale's home city of New Haven, academics, financial aid, admissions, um, and information about the Eli Whitney Students Program. Um, so please note um, that um, uh, the students will share their Yale experiences so as to give you an idea of what it is like to be a Yale student. Um, and uh, thank you to those of you who submitted questions with your registration for this session. We'll try to answer as many of those questions as possible. Um, it, it's possible that we may end up sort of going past uh, the allotted hour, we'll, we'll see, um, but we're gonna try to answer as many of uh, the questions that you submitted previously um, as possible. Um, so capturing everything about Yale in less than an hour is, is impossible, um, but the admissions office has given it some thought and came up with something really concise, and that is Yale is, and I know, that sounds like a really bad piece of minimalist poetry, um, but I do think that the and concept captures Yale well. As you start your search for a four-year college or a new college, you may be thinking in terms of ors rather than ands, should you major in physics or philosophy, um, whether you want to go abroad or stay on campus to do research, whether you should apply to a large research university or a smaller liberal arts college, um, whether you want to go to school in a city or, or a smaller college town. Well, I think what sets Yale apart is really our philosophy of and, and you don't have to choose between those things. So first, our home city of New Haven, Connecticut, it's a perfect fit for this and analogy um, because it is an and city. When you live in New Haven, you get the best of both a small city um, and college town. Um, Yale's campus is embedded in downtown New Haven, which is conveniently located between New York City and Boston along the I-95 corridor. It's a small city with a population of about 130,000, so it's not a huge metropolis like where Rudy's from, Chicago, um, uh, but but New Haven is, is urban. Um, I like to say that New Haven is large enough to be interesting, yet small enough to be friendly. Um, there are over a hundred restaurants within walking distance of the New Haven Green, and New Haven has the second largest collection of free public art of any city in the United States. Most people actually don't, don't know that. Um, there are many affordable apartments for rent or to share in, in New Haven. Um, most everything you need is, is within walking distance. And there are also free Yale shuttle buses that take you to different parts of the campus um, or even to the, to the Metro North train station. Yale students actively engage uh, the the New Haven community. We're not the sheltered ivory tower where we have nothing to do with the citizens of New Haven. Um, in fact, Nearly every year or every two years, um, for the last 30 years or so, we've had an undergraduate get elected to the New Haven City Council. Um, I think it's great that students care enough about the local community that they're willing to run for public office. Um, and, and Rudy, um, trust me, we'll, we'll, we'll get Hillary to answer some questions too. Um, but Rudy, what have you enjoyed about living in New Haven? And can you tell us about your, your living situation? Do you live right in the city? Do you share an apartment? No, that, that's a great question. And, um, and thank you for asking it. Um, I, I found that, you know, coming from Chicago, um, I've also worked in New York City professionally and LA. And Yale is big enough to be a city and to feel like a city. This is absolutely true. It also has the logistics and transportation access where if you're a student for Yale, it is easy to get around. Um, there are shuttles that will take you and pick you up and, and not only take you back to the neighborhood that you're maybe living from or dorming from, but they'll also find places to drop you off close enough to like places that you need to get your own material goods. We're talking Walmart, um, Trader Joe's, like it, it, it is not a requirement to have to own a vehicle to be in New Haven, uh, which is great because coming from Chicago, um, I was used to living off a train. Like I, I used to select what neighborhood I wanted to resign a lease based off how close I could be from a train because I needed to have access to downtown Chicago for work and to just have access to an airport or to my family. And this was the easiest way to make that decision. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm really happy to be in New Haven, um, trans getting from place to place is easy. And, you know, like 
Patricia said, we are close to New York City. We are close to Boston. We're also close to Hartford, Connecticut. So we've got three amazing international airports that we could get to and from at a moment's notice. Um, my family themselves, like my siblings came and saw virtually the campus for um, just virtually, they were able to see everything and, and interact. But before that, they were able to come and uh, it was easy to get them to get them picked up and to drop them back off. And it was a fun experience. Um, I really enjoyed it. Great, thank you. Um, and to talk about Yale as an and university, you need to understand our undergraduate education, which combines the best of a research university and a liberal arts college. Um, in addition to our undergraduate college, known as Yale College, um, we have 13 graduate and professional schools. Um, there are 1,200 science laboratories where students and faculty members do research. 95% of STEM majors and two thirds of our humanities and social science students conduct research during their time at Yale. And in addition to being a research university, Yale offers undergraduates a liberal arts and science education through Yale College. We offer more than 2000 undergraduate courses every year and we have more than 80 majors for students to choose from. Despite its wide scope, um, Yale places a special emphasis on undergraduate learning. Our tenured faculty members teach undergraduates and students regularly enroll in courses at the graduate and professional schools. Our faculty members are renowned in their fields and the student to faculty ratio is only six to one. We do have some large classes, but nearly three quarters of Yale College classes have fewer than 20 students in them. And some graduate and professional school courses are cross-registered with Yale College. So for example, former Secretary of State John Kerry and, and current U.S. Climate Envoy, he's led seminars at Yale that were open to students across the university. The scholarship happening at Yale is, is really world class, and our undergraduates get to take advantage of some of the resources at our graduate and professional schools, and they benefit from a more intimate undergraduate experience within Yale College. And so this photo here on the slide is a Beinecke Library where Yale's rare books are held. Um, it includes the Gutenberg Bible printed in the year 1455, which is on display right in the lobby of the library. Um, our vast library collection is available to all students. Um, so our students can access amazing original documents um, such as manuscripts and papers from Langston Hughes, who was a pioneer of the, of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and our undergraduates even have their own personal librarian assigned to them, which I think is, is, is pretty cool. Um, and Hillary, uh, many of our attendees wanted to know what the academic transition to Yale um, was like. Um, can you talk about your own academic transition to Yale? Yeah. So coming from a community college to an Ivy League school, I wasn't really, I, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and so um, walking into that, I, I was looking actually for a lot of academic resources and things to maybe help me kind of get caught up because there were some areas that I wasn't necessarily as strong in as others, particularly STEM. Um, and actually Yale has a really cool program called Onexus um, that I ended up taking over the summer. That's kind of like a math prep um, program that is offered, which was super helpful because I hadn't taken a math class in probably eight years, I think, um, before realizing, okay, now that I'm at Yale, I actually have to have um, two QR credits or quantitative reasoning credits. Um, and so I was really nervous about that, but I was so supported um, coming into the school um, through an access and getting connected with um, just different, different resources that were available to me. And actually, um, ended up being really successful in the first QR course that I took on campus. In addition to that, I think one of the biggest differences between my community college classes and my Yale classes is um, really just the amount of, of information that we cover in a single semester um, just seemed to be, it, it, it's at a much faster pace, I would say. Um, so we end up covering a lot more in a single semester than I had in previous semesters, but even even though we were kind of at a faster pace, it didn't mean that we weren't um, understanding or grasping the content at, 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 a, at a shallower depth. Like we were definitely going deep into the stuff and, and the expectation to, to, was to really know and understand this information. Um, but again, there were so many resources on campus to, to really help acclimate to that environment 
that were so helpful to me. Um, so the transition was actually, at first I thought it was gonna be this really big kind of scary thing, like, oh, can I keep up? Um, but just with how supported I was through academic resources and peer mentors um, and the faculty who are phenomenal, um, I, it was definitely not a scary process. So, yeah. And when Hillary was talking about sort of two credits, uh, Yale counts credits maybe differently from your current college. So for Yale, um, usually a semester class is one credit um, and you need 36 credits to graduate. So you might be at a college where you would take a, a, a class at semester long and it's worth three or four credits. Um, and that if it's transferable to Yale would, would transfer as sort of one Yale credit. So just to sort of clarify that. Um, but Hillary, how did you arrive at, at your major? You're, you're an English major. So did you kind of always know you wanted to, to do that? Yeah, so I actually kind of have bounced around between a couple different things. Uh, when I first, um, and actually for most of the time that I was at my community college, my plan was kind of anthropology, um, but I was also taking a ton of creative writing courses and I was really interested in writing. And so then um, when coming to Yale um, and just kind of exploring the options, um, just both because of my interest and kind of the way my credits were working out, um, English was kind of, that it just seemed the right path for me, but um, that didn't mean that I really had to stop looking into or, or studying things, other things that I was interested in, like anthropology, because um, like the Yale undergraduate degree is so interdisciplinary, you, it, it gives you a lot of room to study other subjects and to take classes in other areas, um, which I was really excited about. So even though I'm an English major, it's still like, I still have so many options to study other things that I'm interested in. Um, which I really liked. Yeah. And, and, you know, at, at Yale, we really sort of believe in the breadth and depth of a student's education. So, you know, you might major in a particular area, but sort of only a third of your classes at Yale will be in, in your major. You really have a chance to take a wide variety of classes. And, and, and Rudy, you're a STEM major, very different from what uh, Hillary is majoring in. Um, and what about sort of your academic experience, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, um, but maybe also talk about your interactions with Yale faculty members or, or advisors? Um, thank you for the question. It's, it's been amazing. Um, so I, I came into STEM uh, because I was transferring to, from a community college. I came from a professional STEM background and I had you know, I was director of operations for uh, a logistics company before this, and I was really excited about where artificial intelligence was moving. And everyone that I spoke to that was in that field, I, you know, I, I, I didn't have any family members who had necessarily um, graduated with that type of professional experience. So I would just ask them, like, what, what did you get a background in? professionally or academically. And they would tell me mathematics, physics, computer science. And I realized that's what I wanted to do. But here at Yale, um, you're absolutely right. Um, we're, we're it, requirement, I don't think is the correct word. We're, we're strongly encouraged to stretch for other classes that aren't necessarily, necessarily going to be our forte when we leave Yale. And I love that. I have had English courses here where I've definitely had conversations with myself where I'm like, wow, I could see myself being an English major. Like the class is so intriguing. There have been humanity courses where I've just left the semester feeling that yes, my skill set was stretched and it was a challenge, but I loved it. Um, and that's been such an exciting thing to find about Yale University and Yale College is that um, every professor is world-class and every class is challenging within its own set. Um, and because so many students are required to touch a little bit throughout their life at Yale, at some point, what you may be doing as your forte, it's great to see how those uh, relationships can build across the board. And I I've absolutely love that. I mean, currently I'm taking a class in anthropology that I, you know, that's basically uh, revolved around evolution. Uh, you know, it, it's STEM, but it's in a different set of STEM that I would have taken. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And, and I, if it, 
were not for, you know, not Yale's requirement, but their recommendation of like trying to stretch your skill set. I can't see myself having felt that before taking it. And I, I, I just think it's a great experience overall. Yeah, and I think to be a leader, no matter what field you end up choosing, not only do you have to develop an air of expertise, but you need to think analytically, critically, creatively across many disciplines. And I think that's what a, a Yale education um, provides. Um, and so remember, you know, I had mentioned that, you know, Yale undergraduates are enrolled in Yale College, um, our undergraduate college, but you'll also hear Yale students refer to their residential college. And this term can be a little bit confusing at first. Residential colleges are not academic colleges. Every Yaley is a member of one of Yale's 14 residential colleges. And though our adult students and our Eli Whitney students program live off campus and do not live in a residential college, they are affiliated with a residential college and can take advantage of the resources available through their college and participate in residential college um, activities. Um, and there were many pre-submitted questions regarding financial aid. Um, I cannot emphasize enough that Yale is affordable. Um, Yale offers generous need-based financial aid. For some students on financial aid, it may cost less to attend Yale than to attend a public university in, in their home state. Um, Eli Whitney students um, eligible for need-based financial aid also receive an additional scholarship for housing. Um, we're happy to announce a new policy this year uh, that benefits Yale College students with, with children. So students receiving need-based financial aid who also have qualifying childcare expenses would qualify for a childcare um, subsidy. Um, and Yale students on financial aid are also eligible for an international study award for students wishing to study abroad, um, as well as a summer experience award to fund an unpaid internship. And many students also receive funding for, for research. So please, please, please do not let the price tag prevent you from applying to Yale. If you think that Yale might be the right fit for you, apply for admissions and apply for financial aid. There will be a link in the last slide of this presentation um, to the financial aid um, website. Um, Hillary, is there any advice you would like to share with students who are wondering whether they can afford to attend Yale? Yeah, absolutely. I would say that if one of your biggest drawbacks from applying to Yale has to do with financial aid and covering costs, I would wholeheartedly recommend you still apply because Yale actually ended up being the most affordable option for me, which was wild for me at the time. I did not think that that was going to be the case. Um, when, I was when I was originally looking at transfer options, I had primarily just been looking at um, local schools. Um, just because I didn't think anything else was feasible. And even then I was still kind of scratching my head trying to think, oh, like, can I actually afford finishing my bachelor's? Um, and I, I really didn't know. And then when I had applied and ended up getting into Yale, um, I was over the moon and, and looking at financial aid and discussing, discussing that with our financial aid officer. I was floored that not only could I afford to go to Yale, but it was more than affordable. And it has, yeah, it has been like, financially supportive in every way. So yeah, I could not recommend if that is your biggest barrier, please don't hesitate to apply. Um, I would, yeah, highly encourage you to do that. And, and for those of you in the audience who are veterans, um, uh, uh, veterans can choose to use their GI Bill yellow ribbon benefits or their uh, need-based um, financial aid. Um, uh, and and so, you know, really if, if you know, you forget everything I say about Yale during this session, that's completely fine. I know we're throwing lots of information at you, but I do want you to remember that Yale is affordable. And there are three paths to apply to Yale College. So the traditional path is to apply as a first year candidate. Um, so this would be for students who have lessened the equivalent of one year's worth of transferable credits. The vast majority of Yale students applied as first year students, uh, they went, usually directly from high school to Yale, though some of them may have taken sort of one or two gap years. Um, students with one to two years worth of transferable credits may apply as transfer candidates. Um, the Eli Whitney Students Program is a unique program designed for adult students. Um, if you have not yet received your bachelor's degree and you will have left high school for at least five years by the time you intend to enroll at Yale, you're eligible to apply to the Eli Whitney Students Program. 
And the Eli Whitney Students Program is a traditional in-person undergraduate program for people who've taken a non-traditional route towards their education. All Yale College students, no matter which of these three pathways they come through, receive the same Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degrees from, from Yale. So I mean, the, that's not any different you know, for, for Eli Whitney students. Um, um, they take the same classes as other Yale College students, have the same majors to choose from, and they fulfill the same undergraduate academic requirements. All of our undergraduates, including Eli Whitney students, are enrolled in Yale College. Um, so the Eli Whitney students program is not a separate division. It's not um, a, a different school within Yale. And all Eli Whitney students um, uh, can eat lunch for free in our many dining halls on weekdays during the academic year. Um, Eli Whitney students are really immersed in the greater Yale community and they engage with other adult students, other Yale undergraduates, and even with some graduate students. Many of the advisors to Eli Whitney students have experienced mentoring adult students who have different needs uh, than the needs of 18 and 20 year olds. Um, unlike other Yale undergraduates, Eli Whitney students have the flexibility to take classes full or part-time. Um, how long an Eli Whitney student stays at Yale depends on how many transferable credits they have and whether they are taking classes full or part-time. Um, I think on average, um, students are, Eli Whitney students are probably at Yale for, for three years. Um, and Eli Whitney students have up to seven years to complete their degrees, but most students, most Eli Whitney students don't take that long. Um, Eli Whitney students do not live in undergraduate housing. Most rent or share um, apartments in, in New Haven, um, but they may also apply for graduate housing. Because Eli Whitney students have the option of studying part-time during any semester that they are a Yale student, financial aid is, is somewhat different. So be sure to check out our financial aid um, uh, website for Eli Whitney students. Um, um, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, I'll, I'll provide that link um, in the last slide. The Eli Whitney cohort is, is a diverse group of students uh, ranging in age from their mid twenties to their 60s um, uh, with majors spanning economics, archeological studies, global affairs, humanities, engineering to neuroscience. They really come from all walks of life. They're military veterans, their parents whose education were interrupted because they were raising families, community activists, entrepreneurs. Many um, uh, probably like Hillary and, and, and Rudy here, uh, never had Yale on their radar. Uh, when they were in high school. Um, and some uh, really didn't think of applying to Yale until maybe a community college faculty member or, or advisor told them to dream big. Um, and I suspect that nearly every single Eli Whitney student would not have predicted that they would end up at Yale when they were a mere high school student. Um, Yale students have incredible choices upon graduation. But Yale is more than just a place where you get your bachelor's degree as quickly as possible in order to get a good job. The Yale undergraduate experience is really not easily replicated. Um, I'm lucky and grateful to be surrounded every day by some of the most interesting and accomplished students like Hillary and Rudy here who are um, really excited about learning, um, as well as world-class faculty members. Um, um, and, and our faculty members and our students are not afraid to wrestle with difficult ideas and they wanna affect positive change in, in the world. Students will certainly learn a lot from their classes, from their professors, but their intellectual, emotional, and social growth will be in large part due to their engagement with the Yale community outside of the classroom. Um, students will really get much more out of their Yale experience if they eat in the dining halls, um, connect with Yale professors beyond the classroom, participate in the myriad student activities such as intramural club sports, publications, political groups, listen to guest speakers, visit the Yale museums, and engage with the city of, of New Haven. So do not look at Yale simply as a stepping stone to a, a career. It's certainly a great stepping stone, but that's your time at Yale will really be much, much more than that. Um, and, and Rudy, why did you choose to apply 
to the Eli Whitney students program. I mean, I, I know you, you sort of talked a little bit about sort of Yale, but but specifically the, the Eli Whitney um, students program. And, and what do you think is, is special about this, this particular program? Well, thank you for the question. And it, um, I came from a community college program um, that had a transfer director that was aware of the program. And, um, honestly asked me personally to, to grasp for something a little bit higher. And I wouldn't have known about it if someone had not just stopped and said, hey, we are looking for non-traditional students who are looking for ways to stretch their skill sets in ways that make them highly uncomfortable if they're willing to put in the time and effort. And that, that's exactly the category I, I fell into what sold me emotionally, like spiritually, academically on Yale was that Yale's program is so unique in a way that, you know, if you're admitted, you're, ex you're enabled, number one, to take any major, to select any major that you want across the board, STEM, humanities, um, something that may be the most complicated thing that you've ever thought about, to something that drives you spiritually um, without any boundaries, full-time or part-time. Again, when I attended uh, community college again to, to find a way to kick off my career in a different and a pivoting form, I wasn't just thinking about like, how could I get into a school like Yale? I was thinking about like, is it affordable? Uh, first generation immigrant, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, and I was constantly thinking about ways to not become a burden for my family. And Yale made that possible while also giving me the ability to major in something that was going to be complicated, number one, that was going to allow me to build relationships with, with the same professors that any other student was going to have, and then allowed me to really like manage my time, whether it was full-time or part-time. When Patricia says that, um, that we take the same courses that everyone else does. That's absolutely true. Uh, I am in the same advanced STEM courses that anyone else is. There is no STEM plus Eli Whitney side class that someone else is in. It's like, no, 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 no. There's, there's one class that teaches this specific class for all of your college, and I'm in it as maybe some graduate students and some undergraduate students and it's a phenomenal feeling and it's exciting, it's intriguing. Um, it, it forces you to like dig in yourself and say, how can I perform better? Um, and it's the same professor. There aren't any Eli Whitney special tutors. Like you're, you're in the same program. And Yale is committed towards ensuring that if you're admitted, you can select anything that you want and it becomes your job to ask yourself, what should I, what, what intrigues me in a way that I want to achieve towards that major? And, and that's what sold me on Yale. That, that really is because they're committed to you as an individual, not just what they think you may be able to bring later. Um, and that excited me. And the vast majority of students here sort of entered Yale right out of high school. So um, how sort of Rudy, um, how, many of actually the, the attendees sort of submitted, you know, sort of this question wanting to know how the younger students view or, or, or treat Eli Whitney students. That's, very, that's a fair question. And that was a concern of mine when I attended community college. I remember, you know, I, I attended community college as like my first year is like, I think I was 28, 29 years old. And I thought to myself, everyone's, I'm going to be the oldest person there. I won't be able to relate to anyone. It's going to be so hard to build relationships. And it, it, it wasn't true in community college. And it's not true as an Eli Whitney student. Um, I've been able, you know, I've, I've had honest conversations about what my background has been professionally, academically, and in many times, like, students are just excited to see that that's an option that Yale offers for additional students. Like, you know, our profiles are elevated to some extent, with, even within Yale Daily News, which is our local newspaper that Yale has. Like, they're excited to see us succeed. 
Um, and recently, even our president stated that we've done so well, they're expanding the program. Um, so many times, like when I tell someone, I'm like, hey, my name is Rudy, I'm in this class, and, and they'll, they'll notice I'm a little bit older, they'll be like, oh, that's interesting, and I'll be like, oh, I'm an Eli Whitney student, they get really excited, because so many of us are so different in such a different way, professionally, academically, uh, from an entrepreneur standpoint that they're like, oh, that's that's so cool to hear. What's your story? Um, I, 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 have, I just haven't had a poor uh, situation, if that makes sense. Um, it's, it's been really exciting to see how inviting the undergraduate court, court have been. Maybe I'm just old, but you, you know, Hillary and Rudy, you two look very young. I, you know, I, I suspect that you just probably pass for for uh, nineteen year olds all the time. But anyways, so Hillary, sort of, who are your friends at Yale? Are they Eli Whitney students? Are they other Yale undergraduates, graduate students, other members of, of the New Haven community? Sort of, how how does that how is that working for you? Yeah, actually, I would say it's a pretty fair mix of both, all of it. Um, I think. I mean, I, I, I've actually had one class, my, my language class that I've had um, since starting at Yale that I've had every day, every semester. So actually the other students in that class I've gotten to know quite well, um, which has been fantastic. Um, but I hang out with, I hang out with traditional undergrads. I hang out with Eli Whitney students. It's really just kind of, um, yeah, kind of, kind of whoever. And it, and it's, it's, it's never really felt like, um, like there's been any kind of restriction or like you kind of have to hang out with just the Eli's because you're an Eli Whitney student. Like that's not the case. Um, and uh, when I do hang out with Eli's, like sometimes we'll, we'll meet for lunch in the dining halls and, and we are a pretty small group on campus. Um, just in like we, I can't, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but there are very few of us in comparison to um, the larger undergraduate body. Um, but even so, like there are still people, like we have an Eli Whitney group chat and people are meeting up every day for lunch. Um, and we do kind of so like fun side things together. And it's just always kind of like a nice group um, to, to kind of touch base with and to, and to have on campus um, to connect with. But I would say just in general, um, everyone here has been, everyone that I've met has been so welcoming and so, so interesting and so um, open um, to discussion and all of these things that have just been fantastic part of my Yale experience. So um, yeah, so it's, it's really honestly, whoever you connect with on campus, the, there really isn't a limit. <laughs> And I'm going to milk the and analogy here so that, so that I think Eli Whitney students, they're Yale students and they're Eli Whitney students. They're not really Yale Eli Whitney students in, in, in that being sort of in a, in a different category. You're, you're, you're both. And so you have the advantage of um, sort of a traditional undergraduate education, but you also have this cohort um, with you know, who are older with, you know, I think sort of uh, um, similar, well, you all come from different backgrounds, but, um, you know, but more mature, different, you know, sort of more life and professional experiences, right? So it's nice that you have sort of both. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And Hillary, I know that some students at highly selective colleges, and this is true whether they're 18 years old or, or 40 years old, um, they're nervous about whether they would be successful at Yale. And, and for some adult students, they may be a bit intimidated to be with younger people who have been professional students for the last 12 years. Um, can you sort of address what that was like for you? I know you sort of touched on that a little bit earlier. Yeah, so um, like I said, I was kind of, I, I was a little bit nervous about how I would, how I would do in the Yale classes and, and in this environment. I knew it was gonna be challenging, but I still wasn't quite sure what that looked like. Um, and actually one of the first things that I did, which I had mentioned was Onexus. Um, and through Onexus, I actually got connected with a math coach who was also another Eli Whitney student. Um, and like, because of her, she had kind of told me about another program that Yale offers called Academic Strategies. And um, Academic Strategies is, is all about like what they say navigating, like what they call navigating the hidden curriculum so it's kind of like understanding the ins and outs of being at Yale that might not be obvious to people who who aren't you know coming up from like you said Patricia um, like these professionals like 
I can't remember exactly what you said, but like these, these very um, rigorous, like high school programs. Um, and so actually like because of the academic strategies program, which also connects you to a bunch of resources on campus, writing tutors, um, there are workshops that kind of go over strategies for approaching different classes, like all sorts of things. Um, they just, they, they offer so much. So kind of any, any area you're really nervous about, um, that is a point of contact for you. And they actually also offer peer mentoring. Um, so you can even have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with somebody who's gonna kind of help you and guide you. And in addition to that, you also get, um, as an Eli Whitney student, you get a peer mentor um, who is another Eli Whitney student who has been on campus um, and has been going through it already and can kind of help guide you. Um, you also have an academic advisor who helps you kind of navigate the academic life. You also have a college, like a, a residential college dean. Um, there's also a dean for the Eli Whitney Students Program, Dean Sodi, who's fantastic. So really you have so many people who are, are available and ready to help you um, succeed. So it, it, long, like if, if you want to succeed, there are so many avenues to help you achieve that. Um, so at first, like I said, I was a bit nervous, um, but because of all of these things that I was able to get connected to resource wise, um, it really alleviated that nervousness and that anxiety uh, and kind of helped me acclimate to Yale's environment. And it has, it has been going very well ever since. So um, yeah, if, if any of you are nervous about how, what that transition might look like, there are plenty of people that are available to help and listen um, along the way. So. And, and you kind of illustrated sort of our multi-tiered advising um, beautifully. I mean, you're not just assigned to one advisor and, you know, you, you only see them at the beginning of the semester and then you don't see them until, you know, when, next time you have to choose classes. I mean, it, you know, really, everybody really tries to get to know the students and develop relationships with, um, um, with the students. Um, so I've really milked the ant analogy, so I'm going to stop that now. Um, and... Um, I want to provide some information about the admissions process. Um, many of you submitted all sorts of questions about um, uh, your likelihood of admission and about admissions, um, how we review applications. So I'm gonna talk about that now. Um, so we uh, do not use the common application or the coalition application for the Eli Whitney Students Program. We've developed our own application that is designed specifically for adult students. So unlike applications for traditional age, students. We do not ask information about your parents. We do not ask you to list your extracurricular activities, um, but we do request a resume. Uh, the questions on the Eli Whitney students uh, program application form, I think, do a better job soliciting information from people who have been out of high school for a while. The application form will become available online in mid to late November, um, sometime in November. And the application deadline for fall entrance is March 15th. Um, there's no need to rush the application. We're not going to review the Eli Whitney applications until March. But I do encourage you to access the application form um, when it becomes available, um, so sooner rather than later, so that you have ample time to prepare a thoughtful application. All new students enter Yale in the fall term. We do not offer spring entrance. Um, and as I said, many of you submitted questions um, sort of focusing on your chances of admission. Um, I'm going to disappoint you by saying that I cannot determine your likelihood of admission without reviewing your entire application. So there's no quantitative formula that we use to make admissions decisions. Um, so you see Rudy's um, uh, whiteboard behind him. That is not the formula for, for uh, admission um, to Yale. We don't have the algorithm to do that. Um, we do not base the review of applications simply on GPAs or the courses students have taken or on a person's profession. Um, we really use a, a holistic, whole person evaluation process um, in which we take many factors into consideration. Do not let weaker, earlier academic performance prevent you from considering Yale, though we certainly have students on campus with consistently strong academic records. We also have many successful Eli Whitney candidates with poor high school or even earlier college credentials. However, we do expect applicants to present 
strong recent academic credentials with grades primarily in the A range. It doesn't have to be a, a 4.0, but we want to see that you are uh, doing well in your recent classes. Many of our Eli Whitney students transferred from community colleges. Um, Hillary and Rudy are no exception. We also have students who attended four-year institutions. Where you attended college is less important than the college classes you have taken. If you've been out of high school for a long time and have not taken any recent classes, I encourage you to take some liberal arts and science courses before submitting a Yale application. So having a strong writing and quantitative, uh, a strong skills in writing and quantitative reasoning skills, um, that will prepare you well for Yale classes. So I encourage students to take math classes and courses that focus on writing skills. It doesn't necessarily have to be English, it could be history class, could be a, another class that, that um, will improve your writing. Choose classes similar to those offered at Yale. So take humanities classes, social science, foreign language, and science courses. Um, the college application essays and answers to other application questions provide the admissions committee with information about your writing ability, um, but also your intellectual depth, your background and perspectives. Submit thoughtful essays, um, show, don't tell. Um, the admissions committee wants to know what's important to you, what you think about, what excites you and your values. We wanna get a sense of how you would contribute to the Yale classroom. So it is recommended that at least two of the letters of recommendation come from instructors who have taught you in an academic setting. Um, you may um, submit a third recommendation from, from an employer. Um, I know that with many of the classes having gone online because of the pandemic, sometimes you might not know your, your uh, uh, instructors very well, especially if they're sort of recorded class lectures and, and self-paced, uh, but try to do your best in terms of um, uh, uh, finding uh, people to write you recommendations who, who can speak to your academic potential. Um, SATs and ACTs are not uh, required, they're optional. Um, uh, if test results are provided, the admissions committee will take them into consideration. If not, we'll simply base our review of the application on the other documents in um, a student's file. The strongest and most interesting candidates are selected for virtual interviews um, with the admissions office. And like the essays, the interview is a way for applicants to speak directly to the admissions office. Um, our admissions team will take all that I have mentioned into consideration. And there are actually three guiding questions um, that the admissions committee um, ponders as we review applications. Um, one is who will thrive and succeed academically at Yale? Um, because Yale is first and foremost an academic institution and we wanna make sure that whomever we admit uh, will do well here. Second question is who is likely to make the most of Yale's resources? And third question is who will contribute most significantly to the Yale community? And I know that the admissions process to highly selective colleges can, can seem daunting. Um, and that is, um, and, and that it's sort of difficult to determine whether or not you'll be admitted. Um, however, if I think after doing your research, you decide that Yale can be a good fit for you, please consider submitting an application. Um, you're looking at the most unathletic person you've ever met in your life, um, but I do believe in the basketball saying you miss 100% of the shots that you do not take. Um, um, and that said, I tell all students that they should be sure to apply to colleges with a range of, of so selectivity, no matter sort of how accomplished a student might be. It simply is not prudent um, um, to apply only to the most selective schools in the country. I think we're uh, really lucky to live in a country with more than 2,000 colleges, and there's more than one college that will be the right um, fit for you. Um, but um, uh, don't be shy about submitting an, an application. Um, and Hillary, um, you went through the college admissions process relatively recently. Do you have admissions advice that you would like to share with the attendees tonight? Yeah, I think my, my biggest piece of advice would be to really consider what it is you want in your college experience. Um, instead of really trying to think about, oh, how can, you know, what, 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 what's the perfect formula, like, like Patricia said, to, you know, to get into this school. Um, 
I think that that's kind of, that's going to be an approach that is going to be way more stressful than it's worth. And you're really honestly never going to figure it out because there is no formula. Um, so I think the strongest, like the strongest approach is going to be to really spend time thinking about, okay, what is it that I want from my undergraduate experience? Um, what are the values that are most important to me and do they align with this school? Um, and to really, you know, think about those things and, and ruminate on those things um, as you're writing your essays. And I think if you've spent the time thinking about those things and really considering what it is you want um, in that experience and what you want to do, I think that's really going to come through in the essays that you're writing. So, um, yeah, so I think I think that would be the biggest thing to focus on. Um, and that's honestly what I spent the most time thinking about when I was considering applying um, is really just what I want. And that was because of the encouragement of a professor from my community college, um, because I, I Yale wasn't wasn't even on my radar. Um, and it wasn't until he said, you know, you, like, yes, apply to these schools, but I also you should also consider what else is out there um, and really consider, you know, what 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 you want. Um, and so after doing that, I had that's how I ended up you know, searching on the internet and finding the Eli Whitney program and seeing that, okay, this is actually hitting a lot of buttons for me. I, 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 I didn't think that it was really going to be like, a, like a feasible option. I didn't think, I didn't really know what my chances were, but that really wasn't important to me. What was important to me is that um, I was just going to apply because this, this seemed like the thing for me. Um, and so I would encourage, encourage a similar approach. Um, yeah. And you brought up the um, uh, writing the essays, um, and um, we we get a lot of questions about you know what topic should I write about um, in in my essay, etc. Um, and so let me just kind of uh, uh, spend sort of a couple minutes talking about that. Um, um, I think even sort of when my daughter was applying to college, I mean, sort of the first first thought was, oh, what topic should, should I write about? And, and I'd like to suggest that you actually take a step back before you even think about what topic to write about, is think about sort of your, you know, all your kind of life experiences and, 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 and who you are and what you would like to convey to the admissions office. Um, and then, use sort of examples um, um, uh, to illustrate sort of that, that point, um, uh, rather than sort of talking about a specific activity, um, right? Um, so, so really sort of be thoughtful. Um, the topic almost doesn't matter, but how you approach it, what you're trying to convey um, is, is what is important. So you don't necessarily have to write about a major accomplishment, um, you know, some major promotion um, or some sort of dramatic event in, in, in your life. I mean, it, it can be, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I, I often tell the story of, you know, somebody who wrote an essay about walking his younger brother uh, to school every day, um, sort of a pretty mundane activity, but he used sort of the conversations that he had with his younger brother to illustrate um, how important family is to him and, and what it means to be a role model um, and, and, and to look at actually his, his brother's education through his brother's, his younger brother's lens. Um, so it, it doesn't really, have, you know, the topic itself does not necessarily matter, but what you're trying to convey is, is, is more important, if that makes sense. Um, and um, so feel free actually to take a photo of the slide um, with, with helpful um, links. Um, um, but as you're looking at the slide, I actually have just sort of a, um, uh, um, what, a couple, a few questions for Rudy and, and Hillary, um, since we're on, on sort of the Hillary track uh, right now. Hillary, you didn't tell people that you are studying Swahili. You, you mentioned your foreign language, but I think that's pretty cool. And sort of how did you, pick Swahili of all things? Yeah, um, so one of the one of the requirements um, for the degree program is um, three, like it's three language credits or the equivalent of three language credits. Um, like three, or, yeah. anywhere from one to three semesters of a foreign language, depending on your foreign language proficiency. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, 
So when I was, when I, I had never um, formally studied a language. So when I was looking um, through all of the options that Yale has, which Yale has a lot of options, um, I was really kind of looking for something that um, I was A, interested in, B, um, was a language um, connected to a place where I could see myself going, um, but also something that I hadn't really seen offered um, really in any other, other setting. Um, and so Swahili checked all three boxes for me um, and I, I signed up for it and I, I took the first semester and absolutely loved the class. I am in my third semester of it right now um, and I really pl I plan to go all the way to um, level five. Um, and it has it, it, like it's it's really enriched my my understanding of um, of language. Um, and I think what what's been really exciting about the class is that it's also kind of like gotten me interested in reading um, stories in Swahili and you know and maybe you know down the line um, as an English major like also wanting to you know study Swahili literature and and things like that. So it's kind of been opening up other doors and other areas of interest, um, which has been great. So yeah, highly recommend Swahili if you get here and you want to take a language. <laughs> Wonderful. And I noticed we, we actually spent a lot of time talking about sort of the humanities. Hillary talked about sort of English and Swahili and Rudy, even when he was talking about um, um, sort of academics, was talked a little bit about um, computer science, but, you know, also talked about sort of the uh, uh, other classes, other non-STEM classes that you could take. So, Rudy, I'm, I'm sort of uh, going to ask you to say a few words about your STEM experience um, at Yale. Sure. Um, like Patricia stated, um, when I, um, when I was thinking about attending college again and, and how to do it in a way that set me up for success, I went out of my way to try to take some additional mathematics courses, which, you know, transparently I hadn't been in a class in almost eight years. Like I, and I felt really insecure about like sitting in a room, like having to relearn basic algebra, but it set me up for success. That's just the reality of it. Um, like doing the little groundwork and knowing that I wanted to move towards computer science and eventually computer science or artificial intelligence above that. Like I knew that I was going to have to make decisions that set me up for success. I got to Yale. Um, I was so excited to learn that like, as a whole, they do their best to try to make sure that they set you up for success, meaning that you get your lecturer and you might have a discussion and then you have additional office hours, which are voluntary that you could show up for. And you, your syllabuses are so rigorous to the extent where like, you can see where you're expected to move next week. And, and you can kind of keep up with that to a certain extent. Like, I don't know about Hillary and I'm sure it's kind of the same as everyone else. Like I tend to build my quarterly academic planner at the beginning of my fall or spring semester based on what my syllabus is say, because they're so well written, right? Like they, they're, they, they can parse out like, hey, this is where we expect to a certain extent where you may or may not be or what we will be touching in a lecture. And I needed that for myself because of structure, because of regimen, because of how it enabled my success personally in the next semester. And I, I loved it. I mean, it, it, was, it was something that I didn't know I was doing professionally when I was in corporate America that I realized that was a baseline in academia. And I, I, was, I was happy to know that like, I was already kind of in a world of that scheduled setup, but I, I didn't know that it was so formal to an extent that I wasn't using it. Um, and, and that applies to physics, to mathematics, to engineering, like, is Yale hard? Sure. But, but is it impossible? No, because he set you up for success. And I love that. And I, I know we're running out of time, um, but I do kind of want to give you two sort of uh, 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 opportunity um, to share, you know, whether you have any last words with the audience before we close this program. Rudy, any, any last words? Yeah, um, 
I wouldn't be here if people hadn't taken a chance on me professionally. And if when I decided to make my priority academia, community college, if someone hadn't taken a chance on me. So what I'm asking of you, which is what I asked of myself, is like, take a chance on yourself. You know, try to, try to reach for something that you may think is a little bit impossible. Because the, the, the idea of like striving at the, academically is that you're trying to do your best to hold yourself accountable towards that next standard, whatever it may be. And the beauty about that is that you can do that across any major, any discipline, any college. And it, and it, and it really becomes like a life goal to, to hold yourself accountable to. And that's something that, um, you know, when I, when I think about what my experience had been, has been at Yale, it's not just about the STEM classes that I'm taking. It's about the mold and frame of mind that I'm holding myself accountable and how I'll keep that when I leave. And that's a beauty about Yale that I didn't know I was applying to when I filled out the application, but I'm happy to learn it here. Um, and I, I'm just so grateful that um, Yale took a chance on me, and I'm so grateful to see that they take so many chances on students that are Eli Whitney students that have such a diverse background. So if you think that, if you're thinking to yourself right now, like, oh, well, I don't have Hillary's background. Like, I don't care for Swahili or, you know, I'm not a first generation immigrant. Like, I'm not going to get it. Like, try. My, my thing is, like, try. Because there, there are people who have gotten into Yale that you don't know about, that we just haven't placed in front of you today, who have just as a unique background as you do, and you just don't know about it. And, and that's not your fault. And just take a chance on yourself. So that's my thing. That, that tends to be my, my my thing tends to be like try on yourself and that's that's been exciting i'm so grateful to be here and our our yale campus community is so enriched by students um in the eli whitney students program by you know students like rudy and and hillary um because both of you and and sort of you know other uh adult students bring i think just a different perspective that's some you know that 18, 19 year olds simply do not have. Um, and, and you know, you all have really enriched um, um, our campus. And Hillary, any last words from you? Yeah, I think I would just also like to reiterate kind of what Rudy said about taking the chance. Um, because I think if I had listened to myself um, when I was going through this application process and and actually just was like, ah, you really don't have a shot and just kind of decided to to leave it. Um, I really would, I would have missed out. Um, so if you kind of have that nagging voice at the back of your head saying, oh, you're not qualified. Oh, you haven't done this. Oh, you haven't done that. Like really just try because if, if you've gone through um, and really looked at what Yale is all about and you think that that is the right step for you and you really connect um, with everything going on here, take that shot because it is 100% worth, worth taking. Um, and also, you know, Yale is not just like, a, it's not just a, you show up, you kind of stay in the background, finish your classes and get out. Um, it, there, it offers so much more. Um, the academics are I think, quite obviously outstanding, um, but there's so much more to Yale. Um, that it offers between, you know, just the community that that's here, but also, um, you know, seminars and lectures, you know, guest speakers that come to campus and, you know, different, um, different things going on around campus, different, um, just, yeah, just so many different things that you can get connected with, um, that there, there's really so much more to this experience than just getting a degree and getting out. Um, so I highly encourage, don't just, you know, look through the academics and stop there, really explore everything um, that you can get your hands on because um, you might find something that you didn't know you were interested in. And, you know, if you apply and get in that maybe that's gonna be a really huge part of your experience here. So really take the time to explore it all and really, really take the chance, take the chance and, and apply. Um, yeah. I, I couldn't have said it any better um, than, than what Rudy and, and Hillary said. Um, and so uh, this slide um, has, you know, links um, and 
you can always contact us at admissions.yale.edu slash contact hyphen us. We'll be happy to answer any questions that, that you might have. Um, I am grateful to Hillary and Rudy for assisting me tonight. Um, and I hope that we were able to share with you um, what we shared with you is, is helpful as you consider your college options. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us. I wish you all the best as you make plans to continue your education Education. Um, and again, do not hesitate to contact the admissions office if you have uh, additional questions.